I guess I consider myself something of a, a news junkie. Uh, whenever I get the chance, I certainly try to watch the, uh, the network news in the evening. Um, and then I, I, uh, I ask myself, why am I doing this? Um, you know, um, everything in the world seems to be so, so messed up. Um, you know, here I am as, as somebody who, who truly believes in the good news. I, I truly believe that the Father has sent his Son for the salvation of the world. Jesus has given his life freely for our salvation. He has been raised from the dead, and, and I have bap been baptized into his death and resurrection, and I'm on my way to eternal glory. Um, you know, that's it. Um, but, you know, I look at the world around me. I even look at the church. God knows the church uh, has had very serious problems in our own time and throughout its 2,000 year history. Um, so how do you deal with all of that? Um, there seems like there's this, this uh, dichotomy, this, this, uh, this contrast, this contradiction uh, between you know, what we believe and what we have confidence in and yet what we see you know, swirling around us. And, you know, part of it is simply a recognition that um, while the final victory uh, of Jesus Christ is assured, um, you know, until he comes again in glory, um, Satan is still very much alive, and Satan does still tempt us, and we still have free will. And so sin is going to, to occur. Um, uh, I'm, I'm a great fan of St. Paul, and... Uh, Especially, I, I appreciate his letters. Uh, and when you read them, you recognize that here was a man who, whose life as, a, as an apostle, as a, an evangelist, was, was always a case of one step forward and two steps back. I mean, he, you know, he'd go someplace and preach the gospel, and he'd establish a community of faith, and you know, things seemed to be going well, and he'd go on to the next place, and, well, it wouldn't be a matter of weeks, and he'd get get word that, you know, what he had accomplished in one place, you know, uh, Corinth or Philippi or wherever, uh, things were all messed up. People were now believing something that he hadn't taught them, or they were fighting with one another, or whatever, and, and so, you know, he'd, he'd write these letters and say, for, for heaven's sake, you know, what's going on back there? And so, you know, that's the experience, it's the human experience, and um, I... I think we, part, of, part of dealing with that is simply being a realist, I think, and, and not, not living with our, our heads in the clouds. Um, you know, I'm sitting here in my office and every day I get mail and, you know, it's kind of like watching the evening news, uh, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, people are complaining about something or there's a recognition that something's off, something's off the rails someplace. And, you know, people think that I'm the bishop, you know, I'm going to fix everything. No, I'm not going to fix everything. And nobody else is going to fix everything. You're not going to fix everything either. Um, and so I think that's be, being realistic. We, you know, until Jesus Christ comes again in glory, everything is not going to be right. But the other thing is I think we have to have an internal confidence uh, that as long as we're faithful to Jesus Christ, uh, as long as, as we're living our lives according to his grace, uh, that, you know, we ought to have some internal peace, even in a world in which things around us are, are messed up. Um, and um, we, we, um, we then uh, acknowledge that we're not going to be able to make everything right in the world, and yet things can still be right within ourselves.